Hey guys, what the heck is going on? Sam here coming at y'all today with a, a match between uh, Good Pal and I, Jinzo and Tonic. And uh, we're playing Rock, Paper, Scissors War for like 30 minutes here, trying to figure out who's going to start. Uh, I think it took us like six or seven times to figure out who's going to go first. Okay, so he's going to go first. Um, if you guys don't know Jinzo and Tonic, I'll link his channel down below so you guys can check it out. Um, he's really cool. Um, he literally lives across the world. He's um, a lot more dope than uh, me and Tyler and Cooper are so you guys make sure to go um, check him out and go sub to his channel he puts out a lot of goat format and other retro Yu-Gi-Oh content so you guys make sure you go sub to him and uh, yeah we're both playing Flip Chaos um, he's playing obviously a more kind of trap version uh, hence the ring or I'm not sorry I'm sorry not the ring the uh, the Raigeki break and uh, I'm playing Flip Chaos but kind of I mean, I don't know. I'll link the profile down below so y'all can check it out. I think there's one minor change in it, but um, it's Flip Chaos with like 12 different Flip Effect monsters. Um, and I, I've been really, really liking this deck a lot here recently. I made a video or two with this deck since we um, did the profile at a tournament in Texas um, earlier in the summer. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really, really fun deck, guys. I really like it. Um, it's kind of a hard deck to deal with, and that's kind of what I'm basing it around. Um, but yeah, so this match was a couple of weeks ago, and um, I like watching matches sometimes directly after I um, play them, and then other times I like watching matches sometimes a little bit later because then it's like you're you're kind of commentating it from a perspective of like, a, oh, I wish that I would have done this, and you're kind of looking at it as like a, you know, if you were looking at somebody else's match, you'd be like, oh, they probably should have done that, and that's me right here, because I wish I would have set Book of Moon instead of um, discarding it <laughs> with the card destruction, um, don't know why I did that, but uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool, um, just kind of watching it from, you know, my other own perspective, uh, instead of just you know, watching it right after I did it, being like, okay, cool, this is why I did this, so um, right now I couldn't tell you why I discarded Book of Moon, because I in, in this deck, I really do consider Book of Moon kind of a power spell because it's an out to everything. It's an out to Snatch, Ring, Mirror Force, Sakuratsu, your opponent's Sork. Um, and it's also just like you can combo it with um, different effects. You know, obviously like flip effects, but you can make it to where your Chaos Monsters can activate their effects twice um, because, you know, they flip up as new monsters. So I don't know why I discarded Book of Moon, but I did. Um, usually with card destruction, it's just you want to discard... Uh, in, my, in my opinion, just your monsters, um, unless, you know, you just have a dead premature or, you know, some, you know, just obviously there's exceptions, but, um, so I attack into his spy and then he, uh, summons another spy. He has a trap face down. I want to say it was ring or uh, maybe it was right. I don't know, but he didn't activate it obviously because he wanted to kind of, um, clean out his deck a little bit. So activate Sork's effect to banish the spy he set faith and i set merchant and um yeah our decks are pretty identical we pretty much have like the same cards almost card for card except for um i think my maybe we have like a few different ratios on our flips and he plays a few more traps than i do but um it's standard um you know flip chaos i guess you know you could say, but we both obviously have our own different builds. So um, he activates Duo, but I have the Assailant in hand, which he rips right here. Even if he would have picked any of the others, um, every one of them is a flip, so it would have just been a one for one anyway. Um, and uh, Duo is, I'm not saying it's not good against Chaos, because obviously if you can Duo early in the game, it's really good. But like once Chaos kind of gets going, um, it's Duo becomes arguably lackluster um, throughout the game just because um, your opponent is able to choose what lights and darks they want in the grave your opponent is able to um, you know kind of clear out their hand like with thunder dragons and night assailants and a lot of a lot of chaos decks do play serpent as well too um, I don't play serpent in my build but a lot of them do and obviously serpent just you know helps um, relieve the pressure of the liquid duo um, so he flips to Korchi he's gonna draw and then he's gonna get a plus one Thunder Dragon. Thunder Dragon's a really, really good card. If you guys are watching this and you are a beginner in GOAT or you're just like searching YouTube for matches to watch, um, Thunder Dragon's a really, really, really amazing card in uh, a GOAT format, but obviously like in a flip, Chaos, Control, or even just, you know, any version of Chaos really. Um, it's a plus one immediately. 
and it's just a free light fuel. Um, you deck thin by two, and you're able to um, just kind of like, man, I don't know. You, there's so many different things that you can do. It's a level five, so you can, um, you know, tribute your monster or your opponent's monster or, you know, whatever. So, um, yeah, so Thunder Dragon's a really, really cool card if you guys, you know, I guess I'm kind of talking talking elementary. Um, <laughs> for anybody that's been playing um, Go Format for a long time, you're probably like, Sam, I know Thunder Dragons. I know why it's good. <laughs> but for anybody that's uh, watching this, um, that's just kind of getting an idea of, you know, uh, chaos and goat. And in general, I'm kind of trying to keep it trying to keep it elementary for you guys, so to speak. So I activate Premature, pay eight, and then I'm going to summon the Thunder Dragon. What I would do right here is clear to, okay, yeah, the Decorchi, and then gets, because he already has some darks in grave anyway, so, and then I'm going to, um, I mean, I say plus one over the Decorchi running over it, but I mean, he got a card off of it anyway, and Decorchi is supposed to help you cycle, and then they go to the grave, so, um, you know, it is what it is, um, it, I wouldn't really call it a plus one, I'm not really sure, so, okay, so he's probably going to set the Torrental, I would guess. And then activate card destruction after he summons the Sork. Um, we'll see here. He's going to banish the Thunder Dragon. Okay, so um, banishing Thunder Dragons, whether it's with Sork or BLS or Kaiku or anything like that, um, he it is always a good thing to do. Um, because... Uh, you know, most people only play really Merchants, Faith, Ashura Priest, um, you know, and Thunder Dragon, and DD Warrior Lady. But DD Warrior Lady technically doesn't really go to the grave very often. So the light monster count that's actually really relevant in GOAT isn't as, you know, um, prominent as the dark monster count. You can play so many more dark monsters. Um, yeah, so... Uh, but he did a really good play right here. He waited until main phase two to activate card destruction. Um, cause I guess I'm guessing that he was like, wait to see if that was going to be merchant or faith to see what I got off of that. And then he was going to activate card destruction, be able to use card destruction to his advantage. And he ended up at, uh, discarding my pot of greed, which is super pro move. So right on, um, duo is going to send two dark monsters to the grave. Decoichi, is arguably just like a free duo at this point because it's like, um, it, I mean, it doesn't really hurt him that much because he already has like Decoichi on the field. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's already cycling through his deck pretty good. Now we're both already more than halfway through our decks. So, um, this is pretty cool. So, um, activate Snatch Steel and then we're going to banish his Sork. Um, I activate the Book of Moon on Sork because. If I were to set the Book of Moon, if he had Raigeki Break or Dust Tornado or anything like that, then he would have just easily um, just in phased it or whatever. So I, I can't remember what he has set, but that's why I activated the Book of Moon right there on um, my main phase too. So knock on his Dekoichi, which legit doesn't hurt him at all. Um, if, if I could guarantee that somebody was going to knock my Dekoichis every time instead of my faith or something like that. I always, all the time, because, um, the Koichi, I mean, I play three of, because I like to, you know, deck in as much as I can. And I like opening the Koichi because I like to try to spade out their knock as soon as I can. But the Koichi is like a, um, you know, it's a, a floater, so to speak, because it just gives you another card whenever it leaves the field. Um, unless your opponent's at, you know, using stuff like blade knight or, you know, level two swordsman and that kind of stuff. So, uh, Torindal is going to uh, activate, and then we are at the most sim simplified game state you can be at, which is both of us are top decking. So he top decks <laughs> Serpent, which isn't a bad card when you're talking about a simplified game state. Then I get the Merchant, and I'm sorry, not the Merchant, the Faith. And then I bet you right here he's probably wishing that he would have. Um, not set the serpent, but he didn't know he's gonna draw on the right Yankee break. So hindsight, it really wasn't a bad play. It's obviously like the right move, but at the same time, like I don't know. So I've got BLS in hand. I don't know who wins this first game. I'll be honest with you. It's looking like I'm in a pretty dang good position, but um, I don't know. I know that we go to game three. So 
Actually, I pot agreed. I draw on a spy and book of moon. Spy is probably not my first choice of what I want to see this late in the game. Spy is like more of a starter card, which is why I like to play three of that. A lot of people, or some people play two. I'm not a huge fan of two. I like to see spy as soon as I can. I like for my opponent to knock my spy um, because um, you can only activate spy's effect so many times before it becomes irrelevant in the game. So, um, yeah, so um, I like to try to play spy as early as I can, <clears throat> swing in for 300 on the Magician of Faith, and he's going to top deck something really cool right here, I bet. Set spy, set book. Oh, trapped us you that sucks oh man um so i am um, i really do like having like my favorite part of playing flip chaos is when i have a um like flip effect monster face down and then a um chaos monster face up and then a book of moon set and my opponent hardly has anything on the field because I have just so much field advantage at that point um, that it makes it towards like a really uh, hard board for my opponent to out, so to speak. So um, I ended up drawing into the other spy. <laughs> I think if that would have been anything else, literally anything else, because I put in 54 damage right here. Um, it would have been, wait, no, is that a game? Huh. Okay, well, I guess I was game then. Maybe I miscalculated. Um, anywho, game two, and uh, that was a pretty cool, that was a pretty cool game one for sure. So, um, yeah, as you guys can see, he's playing like the trap version, and I'm playing the um, other version, <laughs> which, <laughs> which doesn't have traps. Usually if I see his deck, I will side in roll decrees. I don't know 100%. That's what I do right here. Sometimes I will side in, um, you know, like mind controls. Maybe sometimes both. But um, in my in my deck, if I'm playing like a mirror match like this, it's really hard to find room for, you know, um, a ton of side cards. Like I have three cards that I can side out always. But um, like whenever it comes to you know mind controls and stuff. Um, it's hard because, you know, with other decks, you've got, you know, knocks that you can side out if your opponent's playing aggro. Um, and, you know, obviously, like, you can side in other stuff for those. But really, when it comes down to playing the mirror match, like, I need all my engine cards and I need all of my, you know, other stuff, too. So it's kind of just like, like, you know, what can I side out, I guess, so to speak. So um, he's going to sell that to Koichi. I'm going to go upstart right here. Boom. Card destruction, interesting. Whew. Man, like, if I activate card destruction pretty soon, that's going to be, like, a um, really good for him, you'd think. Um, okay. Yeah. So, me activating card destruction arguably probably is going to help him win this game because if I had two Thunder Dragons, a Flip, and a Night Assailant, and another monster, like, dude, I would love to see card destruction. Holy shit. Okay, so he drew, <laughs> he drew into Trap Dust Shoot, Torrental BLS, Raigeki Break, the Serpent to Pitch off the Raigeki Break, and the Koichi. So that's pretty damn good, if you ask me. Um, I get into Thunder Dragon. I'm always drawn into Thunder Dragon after I activate Charity or after I activate card destruction. It always happens, man. Like, more in real life, I feel like doing book probably does a little bit better job at um, spacing it out. But in real life, I feel like it's even worse. Um, Trap Dust Shoot on his standby phase. Don't know what I'm going to return. I said, yeah, give me a second. Um, even looking at it right now, I'd probably have to still, like, given everything that's already happened in three or four turns, I'm like, man, I, phew, I don't know. Like, it's kind of a hard decision. You'd think BLS because he has lights and darks and growth, but he also has some a pitch trap. And um, he has his own trap, does you? So I got to think about, like, you know, what he's going to pull out of my hand and what do I need to keep 
out of his hand so that I can still be able to play, so to speak. Um, he's got Rageki break, so, man, I that Rageki break is brutal. Like, if you have Rageki break and Sinister Serpent, that's just super brutal. But, yeah, BLS seems like the best option, I guess. Um, even though, like, arguably shuffling back Chaos Monsters whenever it's such a high-resource game like this and a high-life-point game like this, shuffling back Chaos Monsters isn't as um, useful, I guess, because, like, um, whenever I play Chaos, I'm like, man, I really wish that my Chaos Monsters would stay out of my de would stay out of my hand until I had, you know, 20 cards left in the deck, until I'm halfway through the deck, because, like, you really want to make sure that you have the resources in Grave that you need, and you want to make sure that you have the resources, like, in your hand and on field, to be able to, like, to protect your Chaos Monsters and to be able to, like, combo with them and stuff. So, um, shuffling back a Chaos Monster arguably isn't as, like, productive in the game state. Like, when you're talking about, like, the, the longevity of, like, the match because you really, I don't know, man. Like, it really kind of, like, unbricks their hands, so to speak, because um, whenever you're playing Chaos or whenever I'm playing Chaos, I've really found that, like, when I'm um, playing, I would just love to see... Just a bunch of merchants, a bunch of thunder dragons, a bunch of spies, a bunch of decoichis, and you know, a bunch of faiths and draw cards and you know, card destruction, upstarts, and all that kind of stuff. Kind of really at the beginning, and then late game, if all I have left is like just um, some battle traps and some book of moons and my chaos monsters, like that's like that's how you win like the late game. This is because like you're able to just like put so much pressure on on your opponent at the end. So, but anyway, that's my rant for um <laughs> shuffling back your opponent's chaos monsters um let's see trap dust shoot did i search with the sand yen just now i don't know if i did huh i don't know maybe i did and i just missed it anyway if i if i didn't just roast me down in the comments and let me know because uh sometimes I misplay, meaning all the time, every day that I play cards. I always misplay, so. Okay, there we go. Boom. Search the uh, faith. And then, uh, looking at my opponent's hand. I don't I mean, you'd think serpent, but faith also isn't a bad idea. Yep, okay, so I said faith. Um, he doesn't have any discard traps right now, but um, doesn't mean he can't draw into them. Um, Jinzo and Tonic's definitely playing a deck that makes it hard to... I guess like figure out what you're wanting to play like how you want to play against this deck I guess because it's like it's never a good I don't know okay let me figure out how to word this like activating dust shoot against his deck is like is like damn um do I want to get rid of the problem right now or do I want to get rid of the problem that I know is going to be a problem later if I don't kill him um and that's a really good deck to be playing because you really force your opponent into like either playing the long game or playing the short game for, you know, short minutes, I guess, so to speak. It's like, it's like, do you want to get rid of problematic cards that are problematic right now? And it's going to help you for a little bit, but do you want to get problem, get rid of problematic cards right now that are going to be good for you later? And it's like, I don't know, some kind, sometimes it's kind of rough because you're like, I know the cards that I have now. And I know that, um, you know, I can deal with whatever he has right now if I do it right. But, like, when the life points are this high and when we both just have an insane amount of, like, cards, um, it's kind of really hard to figure out those kinds of things. Because um, this is not a low-resource game at all. We both have got, you know, five, six, seven cards each. So, um, yeah, it's definitely high-resource, high, high life points. And this really just kind of comes down to usually these games – there will be one specific moment in a game where it's like, oh, okay, that's really kind of, you know, what set the game off. Like, somebody will activate a card destruction or somebody will activate a Raigeki break or um, summon a BLS or banish your opponent's BLS. Or There will be, like, some moment in the game where it will completely turn the whole thing around. So um, I return the faith with the Night Assailant, which is, arguably one of the best late game moves that you can play um in chaos because um man late game i mean you've got so many spells in grave and then if your opponent's already burned through a knock or two or whatever and then the faith resolves it's just kind of like you know that's it's really really powerful like um never underestimate 
with chaos, um, the power of being able to stall, I guess, so to speak. So, um, premature on the thunder dragon, super interesting ring on the thunder dragon. Okay. So here where it's looking like game state is starting to simplify. So ring knock premature have all been activated, um, this turn and, um, life points have been dealt finally. And then Dust Shoot is getting activated. So slowly we're starting to dwindle down each other's resources. Um, this is kind of like what I was talking about a second ago. There's like one turn or one play kind of in the game, like where things really start to, um, you know, dwindle down, so to speak. And then, uh, yeah. So Dequitchy is going to flip back up with the Book of Moon. That pretty much just turns Book of Moon into an upstart goblin, so to speak. Um, attack him with a Dequitchy on the Faith. And Faith is going to return Charity. Okay. I, I, I think that I might have tried to go for Knock right there to kind of keep him on the ropes. Um, like hindsight, Knock might have been a better idea because I think if he re ends up resolving his faith, I think I'm going to be probably in a, a mess. Ah, Drew in a duo. Okay, and Knock. I know we go to game three, so I'm like, how did I lose this one? Man, this card, the Spy or the Decoichi. Okay, Decoichi. I'm curious on how many spies I have left. <laughs> okay, so knock the face. Seeing how many face I have in my grave. I don't know if I've used two or not. Man, this ends up turning into a grind right here. Jeez. Okay, so I had one more faith left in deck. And then a duo is kind of obsolete right now. So I'm going to banish the Thunder Dragon. Banish another Sork. Summon Sork. And attack or defense. Okay, defense. And he's going to Book of Moon. Boom! It's pretty good. Prime example right there why Book of Moon is such a good card, not only in Chaos, but the Chaos Mirror match. Like, a Book of Moon can turn the game around, for sure. Like, such a good card. Like, okay, for instance, that Book of Moon, like, ended up getting him one card closer to, to BLS. Um, I, I mean, we, we never know, but like, Depending on how stuff would have went down this turn, I don't know. You know, if he wouldn't have had BLS right there, who knows? Because I think that, you know, I might have been able to do something maybe next turn. Uh, man, that's crazy. So, yeah, this is where it's looking like it's going to turn around for him because I've got MST is probably not what I wanted to see right there, but um, it's kind of like do you blind MST or do you just set it and. Um, I mean, all of his stuff's like chainable, so it's kind of like, what do you do? Um, I'm no, I know that he's playing stuff like Greg Eggie Break and, um, you know, Ring and stuff like that. So, um, activate Sork priority on the BLS, but he's got another Book of Moon, right? Boom! Jesus. Okay. So, Book of Moon twice. Um, if you're playing. Flip Chaos, and you're not playing three Book of Moon, you need to highly reevaluate your life because, um, like I was saying earlier, this is why I consider Book of Moon a power spell in this deck because um, Book of Moon has saved his BLS and his Dekoichi, and his De with his Dekoichi allowed him to draw into BLS. And the Dekoichi got him one card closer to Pot of Greed and BLS right here. So um, and I'm pretty sure he's got a discard trap down there. Um, no, okay, no, it's Trinal. Okay. But still, um, it's not bad at all. Um, Battle Face is going to attack into the Sork and into the Spy, you'd think. Um, he's doing that because I didn't... Um, I didn't um, negate his attack, or I didn't have a response to his attack last turn, so he's like, okay, cool, so I'm good to attack again. Um, the Quich is going to reset itself. MST on... His Torrental, which is 
not a bad one for one. I'm kind of desperate now. So, but yeah, if you guys haven't, haven't realized like book of moon, 100% turn, turn this game around. Like it was insane. The power of book of moon right here. Like I'm now kind of just eating shit to a BLS right now. So, um, and right here, he's just going to keep banishing things with my BLS and, um, you know, if it, okay. So, and here's a, here's a cool interaction. Like say I were to have Torrental on his three monsters, I would have got rid of my monster, which is obviously a souk, which is public knowledge right now and my Torrental. So he would have gotten rid of three and I would have gotten rid of two, but at the same time, um, like he still would have been up on a card advantage. So um, finally activate the duo because he finally had two cards in hand, but one of them was a serpent. So bummer. And then uh, you would think that I'd summon BLS right here and banish his BLS, but we will see. <laughs> he just went ahead and banished it. It's funny because even if it was a sword, it could still face up. So Okay. So you would think that I'm in a decent position right now. Set Night Assailant, or Set Serpent, turn to court you to defense. Okay. He's just kind of playing defense right now. Um, I don't know. I got seven cards, so I don't know if I'm going to deck out or what, but we'll see. This is getting super interesting. Okay, so I'm going to set the Decoichi to help myself deck out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that what? Is that how this ends? Do I deck out? Jeez, I don't even remember. I've probably played a hundred games since this. So, I don't know. You would think that from an outside perspective, even if oh my gosh, charity, boom. Okay, maybe I don't deck out. Maybe he just kills me. That'd be a more that'd be a better thing to see, I guess. So you'd pitch. Serpent and heavy or spy? I'm not, yeah, it just kind of depends on. You would think maybe heavy. Okay, spy. Given the amount of cards that were left on my deck, but he knows what he's doing. It's a little like. He banishes spy and thunder dragon. I like banishing spy and thunder dragon. Those are probably my two favorite targets to banish out of the grave. Um. You know, when the more you play GOAT, um, the more you realize that, like, the little things that you do throughout the matches are the things that really can kind of shift the whole entire um, game. And, like, if, if you do something right, then, like, it makes it to where... I don't, I don't know how to explain this. Okay, so here's an easier way. So... You're like, well, but what if they have this? What if they have this? It's like a 2% chance that they may have this card. But if they do, I'm glad that I did this one certain thing, so to speak. Um, and for me, that's like, um, that's like, I always banish Spy and Thunder Dragon in case my opponent's playing something like Dimension Fusion. Um, because we both special summon our monsters um, that are banished. And I always like to special summon the Spies and the, um, the uh, Thunder Dragons just because, you know, they're arguably the biggest monsters that are in the grave. Um, I like to save my um, my chaos monsters um, for premature. Or like I, I at least like to save one, so to speak. But um, and then uh, yeah, so and I like to try to keep my flips in there. I know I'm kind of rambling at this point, but um, there's just so many little intricate details that you can do when it comes down to like just playing the chaos mirror match or in just playing chaos in general. So activates the heavy. Oh man. Uh, I don't, I don't even know if like I'm even at the point now to where it's like, I'm going to, I can even come back because oh, man, I drew heavy. That sucks. Um, right. Yankee break on the face down. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I just deck out right here. There's no way. There's no way I'm coming back. I already used like all my power stuff. This is a bummer. Set Breaker or Set Serpent. Okay, Normal Summon Serpent. 
Surely he knows that I've used like all my chaos monsters. Oh my gosh. Set merchant. That's a bummer. Oh man. My last two cards were merchant and Koichi anyway, so it's not like I had a uh you know, a way to win. So that was crazy. That was probably one of the craziest uh chaos games that I've played like ever. That was nuts. So sighting in progress. Oh, so like I was saying last time, Decree's a good side. Um I ended up Siding trap dust shoot for some reason. I think it's because I kind of probably wanted more of just to sometimes I'll side in dust shoot against those kind of decks because like it's a combo deck, so to speak. Like, you know, you have um your traps that kind of go along with cards like Thunder Dragon or Sinister Serpent or you know, Night Assailant, that kind of stuff. So if you can kind of snipe out the monsters that combo with their discard traps, you know, there's things like Ragaki Break, Phoenix Wind Wind Blast, and um you know, cards like that, then it kind of makes it harder for them because they'll have to discard something like a, a spy or a chaos sorcerer. Or, you know what I mean? Like I don't know, just a spell. Maybe they don't need a second. And they're, they're kind of in a way going neg one um, because they're having to discard something that they're not getting any value off of once it hits the grave, maybe later, you know, if it's like a light or dark, but um Anyway, so that's kind of why I was siding in Dust Shoot and why I do side in Dust Shoot a lot. So, all right, so Jinzo and Tonic has an absolutely beautiful hand right here. He's got a discard trap, and I have no card set to hit it on the end phase. He mind controls my spy, um, and then he has Pot of Greed. So, wow, and that's very good on his part. Um, he knows that I play spy, and he plays spy as well. So, uh, activate mind control before you activate pot of greed just in case because you don't want to for some reason draw into that spy that you were about to hit um man that's crazy that is a just a an awesome opening so gives me back my spy and then dude he's he's got this it's looking like oh my goodness Okay, so I set to Koichi, I set two. And then in phase Ragaki break. Yep. He hits Snatch Steel, okay. Dust shoot. Okay, so shuffling back a Thunder Dragon is subpar because he's already got two. It'd been been better if I saw the Dust Shoot the turn before so that he wouldn't have the Thunder Dragon, but, um, I mean, he had Night Assailant anyway, uh, which, I don't know if he got anything back for the Night Assailant, anyway, but, um, sorry guys, I'm like super ADD when I watch these matches back sometimes, um, so, like I was saying earlier, sometimes shuffling back, um, a Chaos Monster can almost benefit your opponent, like, if they're, if they're playing Chaos, because, like, the Chaos Monsters can clog your hand, um, like I said earlier, I would love to see just a bunch of small flips to Koichi Spy, Merchant, Faith, Thunder Dragon, Upstart, Book of Moon. You know, all that stuff early on in the game. And then try to keep um, the Chaos Monsters out of my hand if, if I could. So um, He activates Mind Control. I don't know how many Mind Control he sides. but um, So here's my theory on it. And it's just another, you know, me rambling for a second. But I, I used to side Mind Control. But now I side... Um, I mean, I, I still do, but I used to side three. Now I side two for the reason of like, if you activate like against a lot of players, you'll be able to resolve one mind control um, on, you know, their face down because they don't know that you play it until you play it. Um, and then if, you know, after that, they'll probably end up setting things like, which I know I do. If I see my opponent playing a mind control, then after that, I'll try to set, you know, like Tsukiyomi or Sangan or something just to kind of, you know, something that really won't benefit their mind control at all, like almost makes them go kind of neg one, so to speak, for the turn. Um, so I feel like on the first mind control, you'll be able to actually activate on their monster, on like their flip effect monster that will benefit you. But on the second mind control, um, I always try to just steal their chaos monsters. So um, because, man, if you resolve three mind controls against somebody, then not the, I'm not saying they're playing bad or anything. Maybe they just didn't have anything else to set, but like, 
um, you know, it's, it's kind of harder. It's really hard to, you know, resolve three mind controls, not only because like, it's hard to see three of the same card, like in a match sometimes, especially if it's a short, you know, a short, short game or whatever. But, um, I feel like, you know, maybe seeing and activating and resolving effectively three mind controls is kind of hard sometimes. So if that makes any sense to you guys, then cool. Um, Turn one spot of defense or one to attack. Turns two. Pretty ballsy. Okay, so you'd think that I'd want to. Um, yeah. It kind of forces me to hit the sword. That's another cool thing. So, two things about that. Obviously, you want to attack with the bigger monsters. Like, in case that was a spy that was set, you'd want to attack with. Um, you know, Sork, so that you could clear the spy at least. But also, if you attack with something like Sork, then it makes it to where um, it's kind of hard for them to, you know, you kind of force them to target the Sork with, you know, Night Assailant, so to speak, because it's like, that's like the problematic card on the field that I'm going to have to get rid of. Um, so I had mind control. I probably could have targeted something else, but it's looking like I was going to live for a little bit. So, especially with Snatch Shield, it's going to gain some life. Um, do I not have. I don't have lights and darks engraved. So yeah, Sork is just going to hang out in my hand. So that's a huge bummer. Um, <laughs> my gosh, he's just going for it. Jesus. Okay. So surely I can set something. No, I can't. I think that, yeah, Sangan and, and, um, two spies either way will be, um, 3,400. Even the three lowest attack monsters on the field will be, you know, 3,400. So that is game. So you guys make sure you go follow Jinzo and Tonic. Um, apologize for all my rambling. Hopefully you got some sort of, uh, you know, knowledge from my rambling at least a little bit. So anyways, um, yeah, make sure you go follow him. I will link a um, profile down below for the deck that I was playing. And then, um, you can go sub to Jinzo and Tonic's channel and you guys make sure that you like subscribe and all that good stuff. And, uh, we will see y'all later.